Dear friends, welcome to the NIOS studio. In this video, we are going to talk about history and appreciation of art. We are discussing now painting in secondary level. Lesson 1. History and appreciation of art. From 3000 BCE to 600 CE. From Indus Valley Civilization, which is 2500 BCE to 1750 BCE to Mauryan dynasty, which was 3rd century BCE. We see a gradual development in arts and crafts. Artists of Harappan period were extremely skilled. Mauryan period marked a new beginning in Indian history. Highly polished quality of the sculpture pillars from the Ashokan period are treasure of Indian art. Along with this technically improved style, there is also the tradition of popular folk art which continued in the form of crude mother goddess figures. After the Mauryans, when the Sungas came to power, they continued with the artistic activity And we got the great stupa and sculptures of Sachi in the state of Madhya Pradesh. The Kushans who had come from outside India helped in the progress. During this period, we see the development of the sculpted portraiture for the first time. Gupta period is regarded as a golden period in Indian art history. Refinement came in the representation of the human figures. Some of the most important art centers during this period were Mathura, Sarnath, Ujjain, Ohichatra and others. Gupta sculptures show the perfect balance and blending of the style, the skill, the mastery 
and the imagination. The religious sculptures show a divine quality. The slight tilt of the lip, the full roundness of the figures, accurate carvings and simplicity became the stylistic stamp of the Guptas. Along with the religious secular sculptures were also produced in a large extent. Famous paintings of Ajanta were done during this period. Beside paintings and sculptures, the new development in art was the cave and temple architectures. Some of the most important sites in this respect are the Udayagiri caves, in Madhya Pradesh and the Nachna and Bhumara where temple architectures started. In a nutshell, it can be said that Gupta period is classical period of the Indian history. Now let us discuss the objectives of this study. After the study of this lesson, you will be able to describe in brief the art of this period from 3000 BCE to 600 CE. Further, you will be able to state the names of enlisted art objects of this period and distinguish the material used, sites, sizes, colors and place of collection of the enlisted art objects. You will identify distinctly the names of enlisted part of objects of this period and differentiate and identify the characteristics of the enlisted art objects. Let us know about the famous work from Harappan period 
this is the statuette of dancing girl. We give a general description of this statuette. This statue is made of metal and is probably one of the finest examples of the artistic and technical skills of Indus Valley craftsmen. This female figure at the same time shows the fine skills of metal casting and artistic a refinery. The figure is lanky, thin and rhythmic in character. Some very interesting points can be noticed in sculpture. First of all, while she has been shown without clothes, in her left hand she has bangles till almost her shoulder, very much like we can find in the tribal people of modern days in Gujarat and Rajasthan region. Second important thing to notice is the hairstyle. While the other mother goddess figures which have been found from this civilization have elaborate hairstyle, this figure shows a much contemporary style. Her hair is tied in a bun. Also to be noticed is its curious posture. She stands in a resting posture with her right hand at her waist and her left hand on her left thigh. The casting is perfect. Casting is a process in which a mold is made of the clay statue and then melted metal is poured into the mold. After it cools down, mold is broken and the statue is taken out. There is a tremendous monumentality 
in this particular sculpture. That means, though this is approximately 4 inches in height only, it seems to be a larger one to us. This is what makes it really unique. The craftsmanship and artistic skill have been blended successfully in dancing girl. Let us know something about the Mauryan sculptures. We will discuss the Ram Purba Bull capital. Let us have the general description. Emperor Ashoka engraved his edicts and teachings of Lord Buddha on pillars, rock surfaces and tablets. Ashokan pillars have been found in almost every region of India except extreme southern region. These pillars consisted of three parts, a base, an elongated shaft and the decorated crown of the pillar. This crown is called the capital. Capitals are mostly consisted of one or more animal figures, an inverted lotus which serves as the base of these animal figures, a thick disc kind of structure known as abacus is between the animals and the lotus. Bull capital is one of the most famous sculptures among the Ashokan capitals. It is also known as Ram Purba Bull capital. After the name of the place from where this is found. This particular one 
is comprised of a bell shaped inverted lotus as the base, the abacus and on the top the animal part, a majestic bull. There are plant design around the abacus. Scholars are of opinion that these motifs had either come from earlier Middle East or post Greek style. The designs are very minutely and accurately curved. The figures of the bull dominates over the lotus of the abacus. Though the part of the stone in between the four legs is not curved out, it does not disturb the strength or beauty of the bull. We can feel the weight and the power of the animal and there lies the success of the artist. In fact, the ornate quality of the lotus base and the abacus create a contrast with the plain representation of the bull. The curving of the bull obviously shows mastery of the Indian sculptor over their subjects. What is unique about this bull capital is its extremely polished quality. This is one of the most important characteristics of the Mauryan sculptures from Ashokan period. According to scholars, the technique of high polish was learnt from the sculptors of Middle East. Now, we will appreciate one of the most beautiful paintings of Ajanta, which is titled as Black Princess. The general description of this particular painting is very interesting. The caves of Ajanta are situated near Aurangabad district in Maharashtra.
the caves are named after the nearby village Ajinta. The caves including the unfinished one are 30 in number. Some of the caves served as Chaitas, and Viharas. Chaitas are the caves in which the monks worship and Viharas are their dwelling place. Ajanta paintings were done on two phases. First, the Hinayana phase. In this phase, Lord Buddha's images were not created. He was worshipped only through symbols like bodhi tree, staircase and his sandals. And the second phase is known as Mahayana phase. In this phase, Buddha was represented in human form. Most of the Ajanta paintings were done in the Bakataka period. Ajanta paintings occupy a unique position in the history of Indian painting. Ajanta paintings are not done in fresco. Fresco is a technique which was mostly used in Europe. In this technique, colors are mixed with water soluble binders and painted on either dry or wet plaster. But Ajanta artists have used traditional technique of tempera. In this technique, colors are mixed with white and some binder which is made by the artists from different kind of objects. The themes of Ajanta paintings were primarily religious in nature. But at the same time, they also gave enough scope to the artists to show their creative and imaginative skills. The best part of it is that 
even being religious paintings, they can be enjoyed by common people. Black Princess is no doubt one of the best examples of the Ajanta paintings. The free flowing line, subtle rhythm of the body contour, the slight tilt of the face and the curves of the eyes all show the mastery of the artist and his control over the brush. Even the damaged paintings give us a clear picture of how beautiful the colors were. There is a lyrical quality in the painting. The softness of the body contour, the subtle bending of the neck and the simplicity give an heavenly quality to the painting. The color used have been very earthly and devoid of any loudness. Dear friends, let us now assess what we have learned from this lesson. In this valley civilization was named after the site from where the first evidence of this civilization was found. Main sites of this civilization are Mohenjo Daro and Harappa. The whole site is now in Pakistan. Though initially it was considered that this civilization was mainly concentrated in this river valley and was named accordingly. Recent excavations show that it was extended beyond the basin of Indus River. This civilization is also known as Harappan civilization and is believed to have flourished 
between 2500 BCE and 1750 BCE. Great numbers of art and antiquities have been found from this period which include seals, potteries, jewellery, tools, toys and statuettes and other utilitarian objects. Next important period in Indian history was the time of the Mauryan dynasty which was founded by Chandragupta Maurya. Though he himself is an illustrious figure in Indian history mainly because of his administration and his minister Kautilya, better known as Chanakya. His grandson Ashok the Great did lots of benevolent works and contributed much to the development of art and architecture. Ashok was a follower of Buddhism and erected pillars all over the empire to spread the teachings of Lord Buddha. The Mauryan period was followed by the rules of dynasties like Sungas, Satabahanas and Kushans. Kushans had come from outside India but contributed a lot in the development of Indian art and architecture. The Gupta dynasty founded by Chandragupta the first succeeded the Kushanas. Guptas were not only great warriors and administrators, but they were also great patrons of different types of art. Ashoka under the imperial Guptas there occurred an overall development 
in every field including all kinds of art and science. This period saw the rise of the legendary personalities like Kalidas, Aryabhat, Baraha Mihir and others. It is justified to call Gupta period as the golden period of Indian history in all respects. So my dear friend, for any kind of learning support, you can contact us at our helpline number 18001809393 for more information log on to www nios dot ac dot in. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this discussions, and I thank you for watching the program. Thank you.